By the authority vested in me by the Charter of Brown University and the Board of Fellows of the Corporation, I hereby declare the 254th commencement of Brown University convened. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this historic place on this just absolutely glorious day. These will be your last academic exercises as Brown undergraduates. In a very few minutes, you'll be formally granted your degrees. And when you return up the hill to the main green, you will do so as alumni of the great Brown University class of 2022. you loved marching down the hill with generations of alumni cheering you on. They are so excited for you. And I hope that maybe over the past several days, some of you have had a chance to ask some of them about their time at Brown. And if you did, you would have heard some familiar themes that bind generations of Brunonians together. Not just the excellent education you received, the professors you got to know, but also things like shopping period, spring weekend, 5 a.m. breakfast at Louis, and not because you woke up early. And you may even have found some members of the 50th reunion class who took Engine 9 from Barrett Hazeltine. Now, although you have much in common with previous generations of alumni, your class is different. It really is. And you've had a distinctive experience of a global pandemic that intersected three of your four years at Brown. That's unique. Going to college during a pandemic was not what you had planned, and it's certainly not what any of you would have preferred. For a period of time, you had to give up things you love, like musical performance and athletic competitions and volunteering in local schools and social activities, and many more things. Some of you, as the chaplain noted, lost loved ones to the pandemic, people who should have been here today to celebrate your graduations. They would have been so proud of you on this really, truly wonderful day. In the face of very real grief and disappointment, you found ways to keep your communities together, and you did it brilliantly. Virtually, you held remote concerts. I saw some of them. You supported our local health care providers. You tutored school children online. A great program was set up here at Brown. So you did wonderful things. There have been many hard moments, but maybe someday, and I don't know when this corner get, gets turned, but your memories of this period will develop just a hint of nostalgia. They really will. Just think about it. You turned the main green into an open-air study space library with laptops plugged into lampposts. How creative was that? That was amazing. You could yawn all you wanted in the most boring of lectures because people couldn't see underneath your masks. That was great. And you're possibly the first generation of Brown students to say that you missed being able to eat in the ratty. Now, let's be serious. The community came together, and they supported each other, and it was a team effort. And judging by some of the memes I see, Russell Carey, who used to be known to students primarily for his role in calling snow days, has become a campus hero. But in truth, he's one of many, and we owe all of the administrators and faculty and staff and student leaders a debt of gratitude for getting us through this time. And today, because it's an especially big commencement weekend, there are hundreds of Brown employees here to support our largest ever in-person commencement and reunion weekend with all of your friends and family members. So can you please give them a round of applause, all of the Brown employees? Thank you. I also want to recognize 10 of your classmates on the women's crew team who cannot be here today. They are competing in the NCAA championship, so which am I? Now, I, I didn't 
initially, initially decided to stay away from the pandemic in my remarks to you today, but I couldn't. It, it's just been too big a part of our recent lives, and I think we're all going to be processing the significance of this pandemic experience for years and years to come. And as I start that processing myself, I've been considering what I've learned about making hard decisions in times of great uncertainty. On one of the numerous Zoom meetings I had with other college presidents over the past two years, they were part advice and part therapy sessions, I think. Uh, I remember one president describing how this period felt like driving through thick fog with no headlights and having to make quick decisions about whether to turn left or turn right, stopping was not an option. And when you're faced with this kind of fog-like uncertainty, what do you do? What do you do? We like to look for silver linings. And perhaps there's something to learn from our experience. The truth is, life is filled with uncertainty. We often don't know whether decisions we make will ultimately turn out to be right or wrong. We just don't. As Brown students, you faced many decisions as you planned your ed educations, decided what you're going to do at Brown, navigated the open curriculum. As college graduates, you'll navigate even more, even more. In the coming years, you'll make many consequential decisions, where to live, where to work, whether and when to go to graduate or professional school, whether and when to start a family. I can guarantee you that there will be points in your life when you feel like you're driving through a fog with no headlights. So when this happens, what do you do? My experience through the pandemic taught me two things about tackling hard decisions in the face of uncertainty. You may be able to think of more, but I'll just stick with two. One is hold fast to your values. Brown is defined by its values, academic freedom, respect, equity, integrity, and the fundamental importance, absolutely fundamental, of advancing knowledge. And these are the values that guided our decision making in the pandemic. We brought students back to campus. We never stopped our research. We didn't have layoffs. We protected the health of our students, employees, and community members. Doing these things was core to who we are and what we stand for. So values, they're important. They're what make us step back and we ask ourselves, what are we trying to accomplish and why? What matters in the big picture? And I thought about this after Frances Haugen, who she's best known as the Facebook whistleblower, and she spoke at Brown this semester. Hopefully some of you saw her, she was fantastic. And when Frances realized that her work at Facebook didn't align with her own values, she had to decide what to do. She could continue advancing in a stable and lucrative career, or she could take a new path, and one that was true to your, her values. And she did, and faced with many short-term challenges, but that's what she chose. Now, I'm not saying any, some of you may be going to work for Facebook, so I want to add <laughs> that Frances actually said in her talk, go work for Facebook, go work for Facebook, it's a great company, and you have great opportunities to make change from within. So that was her message. But someday the point is, you might be in Francis's shoes. And so what do you do? My advice, think about your values, they're core, they're central, and follow them. This, the second point I'll make is that you have to accept the risk of failure. During the pandemic, Brown took some calculated risks in line with our value of advancing knowledge. For example, Will we be able to stand up a first-class testing program in time for the start of the fall 2020 semester? Despite a few bumps, we did, but it kept me up more than a few nights. Would our students, all of you, abide by the necessary health protocols? For the most part, you did. For the most part, it was great. If we hadn't been willing to take some risk, we would have gone fully remote that's a decision I think we all would have regretted forever. So you have to be willing to take risk. Finding joy, making discoveries, changing the world, these are all things that happen when you're brave enough and bold enough to accept that you might not get it right on the first try or the second or maybe even the third. A couple of months ago, Bill Clinton visited Brown 
And he was asked about whether he had any regrets about his career in politics. And he shared that he probably would have had regrets no matter what career he'd chosen. But then he talked about the need to take risks. And he said this, I thought it was interesting. He said, and I'll quote, the unhappiest people at my high school reunion are not the people who've gone bankrupt, lost elections, been beat up, or had terrible things happen. The unhappiest people are the people who were afraid to try what they wanted to do in their lives. And I don't want any of you to lead lives of regret. I want you to go out into the world, live by your values, and be the brave and bold Brunonians that I know you want to be. And so when you return to this campus for reunions in 10 or 20 or 50 years to cheer on future graduating classes as they march through the gates, you'll be able to talk with each other, your classmates, about how your time at Brown, pandemic and all, has shaped the decisions you've made in the arcs of your lives from today on. Okay, now, would you like me to read the Latin script that confers your degrees? Okay. So I first have to ask the fellows their assent to award you your degrees. So my fellows, I have some fellows here. So, qui honorandi, uenus quos agradum baccalaurei idoneus, comparimus womis, praesentimus et eos ad hunc gradum, promovere licea rogamus. Honored colleagues, we present these young people whom we have found fit for the bachelor's degree, and we ask that we be permitted to advance them to this degree. Do you know what that means? It means yes, yeah, it means yes. Thank you. Candidotio gradum baccalaurei auscultabunt. Will the candidates for the bachelor's degree please listen attentively? Octoritati mihi commissa vos agradum baccalaurei admito, omniaqua jura ac privilegia ad hunc gradum pertinentia wobis concito, in huius rei testimonium diplomata westris conglegis and collegii gramine tradum. By the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the bachelor's degree, and I grant to you all rights and privileges pertaining to this degree. In testimony of this fact, I will award diplomas to representatives of your class on the college green later this today. Congratulations, you may now move your tassel to the left side of your mortarboard. And we look forward to greeting you back up on the college green. See you soon.